it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today is day four of my first five days of owning your Cricut. Um, day one is an overview of Design Space, how to use it, what are all the features within Design Space so that you can start designing your own projects. Um, day two is no matter what kind of projects that you end up doing, uh, these are the essential tools that you need and where to get things. And then if you're still not sure and you want to explore, this is where you buy cheap paper, um, buy cheap vinyls just to see, you know, do I like to do t-shirts or do I want to personalize everything? Um, so that's a tour of everything that you need to buy, no matter what kind of projects you end up doing, okay? Um, day three was this one. I know some people are like, no way. Um, it took me so long to do them, but you need to download Inkscape, Font Lab Pad, and Creative, uh, from Creative Fabrica, Font Cloud. So these three applications will help you so much. Uh, one is just like a font manager, which is, I mean, it's the best one out there, I think. And it's free. All of these are free. So um, there's that. And then for Inkscape and Font Lab Pad, you need it for your cursive fonts. They'll connect it for you. Um, but you also need it so that you can create the offset, the outline that completes every project. It just makes your project that much better. Okay. So that was day three. Day four is today. Day four is just like a quick overview of your machine. Um, and this one's quick. This one is just so that in case you're worried about how to use it. Um, and then tomorrow, we're actually gonna do a project with different materials so you can kind of see what it looks like, what it feels like, um, and then you can get started on all my other videos and do projects. <laughs> okay, so for this one, this machine, I have the Maker. It's the only one that I have. Well, I have the Joy too, but um, the Joy is just a mini maker to me with less features. <laughs> Don't mind my glitter. Um, okay, so back here is your plug. So I'm going to move it over. One is to connect to your laptop or your desktop, and then the other one is to actually turn on the machine. So I'm going to plug it in really quickly. And I don't have a lot of space because this is usually elsewhere. So hopefully this goes in. Okay, so this one. All right, so then we'll turn on our machine. So you can open up this lid and then this also comes out, okay? So here, there's a couple of things in here that I wanna show you. So this is where all your, your blades go, right? Your different tools. This one is your writing tool. So it goes in here. And if you buy an, um, a non-cricket foiling thing, um, it also goes in here. So anyway, um, let's turn on the machine. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to just change out your blades. Now, um, you have this little piece right here that can hold your phone. So you can see that. Um, and these things can, oh, let me move this over. This will just hold extra tools. So usually I will have my brayer because the brayer is essential if you followed me on the last video. Um, the little spatula to pick up things from your mat. So I usually just have those two and then I have my, my two little blades that I use. This one I will use. It's the rotary blade. I mean, I, I do party stuff and I personalize everything. So I mostly have my regular blade in, the one that it comes with. So, oh, do you see? Um, so I always, to clean my blade, right, because I do a lot of glitter cardstock, I push it out and I just blow on it. Or I just take my fingers and do this. Some people poke, you know, get a tin foil, um, a ball of tin foil and poke it. That's fine too. I feel like it's a little excessive because I can just do this and be done with it. Um, some people think that it actually sharpens the blade. It does not do that. There's no way that your tin foil is sharpening your like high performance, you know, German steel blades or whatever, <laughs> whatever blades these are, you're not sharpening it with tin foil. Um, and just to show you again, so you're pushing this out and it pops out the blade a little bit and I'm just kind of like wiping off the debris and that's all there is to it, okay? I usually, like I said, I use this to cut 
vinyl, cardstock, um, HTV, uh, acetate, so all sorts of paper, right? This one so far, the only time that I've used the rotary blade is to cut um, felt fabric and I also cut foam. So your foam to do your shakers on the cake toppers and banners is, um, I use this to cut. So when you're switching it out, this piece has like a little cutout right here. This goes right in. Let's see if you can see that, yeah. And then you push this in and then you, that's it, okay? So I'm gonna put that aside. This is my embossing one. My wavy blade is still, I mean, it's been a year. <laughs> uh, this is to also engrave, so you can kind of see it's over here. I only use these two blades really, okay? Now let me show you how to, this opens up and this is what I have. So I cut a lot of glitter cardstock. So glitter cardstock or and cardstock in general will really dull your blade. So I buy these. This is from Amazon. It's $10 for 30 blades. So as soon as it doesn't cut well, I'm changing out my blades. I feel like it's the best deal out there. Um, now, because I cut a lot in glitter cardstock, what I do is I have, I will switch out my blades and that one just fell out. So this is for vinyl. So any type of vinyl, my HTV or adhesive vinyl, I will use this blade. This is for cardstock, although it's always in. This one is for glitter cardstock. These two, I feel like they're practically the same. I guess the only thing is I would have one specifically for vinyl. And the reason is because I, although I switch out my blades a lot, your vinyl one, it can last a long time and you'll always get a good cut. So for instance, let's say I, my first 10 projects, all glitter cardstock, and then my 11th project is vinyl. If I use that same blade, it's very dull. If I switch it out, this blade will last forever. So I can cut, I can get a really clean cut with my, my vinyl all the time. So that's why I have that for vinyl. I would say these two, at first I thought it would make a difference, but I use these two practically the same. Um, Although I guess if I just did cardstock, because glitter cardstock really ruins your blades, um, I guess I could save myself a little bit, but I would just keep these two separate and just do vinyl. All right, so let's switch out one of these blades just so that you can see what it looks like. So what you do is you pop this out and I just grab it with my fingers. There's like a, a portion right here that's not the blade. So I'm just going to pull it out and that's it. So when you get your blade, it comes like this with the blue cap so that you don't hurt yourself. <laughs> so all you do is, and I'm just gonna take it off, you take off the blue cap and then there's your new blade. I know it's really hard to see. I'm gonna put this one back. I'm just gonna put this blade back for you to see. So what you do is you hold it at the bottom like this. This is the sharp blade on this side. This is the part that goes inside your, um, your holder. <laughs> so you're gonna, I, I just hold it like this, I push it in and I drop it in and then I let go and it's in. Okay, I'm gonna put these back. Um, your star wheels, I don't, oh I think you can see them. Let me move it this way, hold on. My star wheels they come kind of spaced individually. You can move those and slide them. I just slide them all the way over and they're always at the edges because on some of your specialty paper, you'll see the lines, like your metallic papers and stuff. And then also it kind of does it a little bit to your, um, like your gold uh, foil and stuff. So I just always keep my, my um, star uh, star wheels I forget what they're called um over to the side and I've had it like that for years and I haven't had any issues all right so that's one thing um sometimes when materials get stuck 
I just turn it on and off and then we're just playing this game of like a little here and then a little back, a little here, a little back. So I've had leather stuck in here where I thought I needed to buy a new machine. So just patience and keep pulling it out. Let me show you how to load up a mat, okay? So here's your mat. I always use my 12 by 24 mat because it's the cheapest one and I use it for all my materials. So um, paper, yes, um, all of that. So what you want to do is you have your materials here. You want to push it in. There's like little holders right here that you need to feed it into. Now, some people will just hit the feed button. You really need to be holding this the whole time and making sure that it's all the way pressed in and feed the and hit the arrow key at the same time to feed it in. Okay, so let me move this down so you can see my arrow key. I don't know. If you, oh yeah, you can see it there. So I'm always holding it on one end because if you don't do this, it will happen. Your mat is going to be pulled in there and it's gonna crinkle your mat. And then you need to undo it and you have a ruined mat. So um, hold it up like this, push it in, feed it in. You cut your material, It's this arrow key is gonna blink when it's done. If you feel like you kind of pop up your paper, for instance, and you realize that it didn't cut all the way through, if you want it to cut again on the same exact place, 100%, just hit the C button without without um, ejecting the mat. So if you hit this, it will cut exactly in the same place again. So a lot of times I will test for metallic vinyl. I feel like that one's a tough one to cut. I always try to like weed out a little bit and if it doesn't, then I'll hit the C again. Same thing with glitter cardstock. And you'll know too, like as you get to know your blades, um, when it starts to not cut well, in my case, I just change out the blade because the time it takes to fix something because it didn't cut well, whether you're using your scissors or your knife blade, it's not worth it. Um, I just, especially for 30 blades for $10 on Amazon, um, yes. <laughs> All right, let me show you how to feed your pens in. So your pen is easy. It's on this side. You just push it in and you can feel it and you can hear it, it snaps in. Yes, it does um, take other pens as well, um, but I actually don't like the drawing tool that much, so I don't really, I don't invest in the different types of pens that are compatible. Um, there's also a little adjuster here that you can um, buy on Amazon to fit I don't know, like Sharpies or something like that. I I don't pay attention to that because I feel like when it writes, it just doesn't look that nice. I would rather, for instance, like if you really want nice addressed envelopes, I'd rather do like iron on, so HTV and cut it really pretty and iron it onto my cardstock um, or foil. I just the writing feature I use when I do use it. It's for like my acrylic signs. So I draw out the whole design and put it underneath my acrylic sign so that it's my template. I know exactly what's straight and where to place things. So I don't need it to look good. So uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just not a fan of the pen. Um, all right. I feel like that's pretty much the machine. You feed in, you feed out, you close it back up. Day four is not my favorite, but I wanted to show you like just the feeding the mats and changing the blades. All right, but the other days, it'll get you, I mean, seriously, you'll you'll be able to do projects and then you can do all my other videos too. All right, so anyway, let me know what you think. Give me your feedback, questions. I will answer them. And then hopefully you like my first five days of owning the Cricut and I will see you later. All right, bye guys.